Welcome to the Connect with County Leaders podcast with your host, Brian Hill. Hello and welcome to Connect with County Leaders. I'm Brian Hill and with my esteemed guest, John Morrill, who is the acting director of Fairfax County Office of Environmental and Energy, Energy Coordination. John, welcome to the Connect with County Leaders podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks. Yeah, how was Thanks your Thanksgiving? Me. How was Thanksgiving? It was good. It yeah. was quiet. Just spent it with a, a special friend. So, you know, we are doing these podcasts on our strategic plan. The environment is always is, is up. I think it's number nine. When we when people hear this, it's going to be in December. But I still wanted to see how your Thanksgiving was, even though we're going to be hearing this in December. So I just want to make but sure everybody understands. I, pre- I appreciate your interest. Family first, right? Yep. Okay. So environment and the energy is one of the 10 focus areas of the county's strategic plan. What is it in your office role in helping implement strategies that support climate action and sustainability? Right. So our office, OEEC, uh, works with and coordinates activities across vir- with mm-hmm. virtually all agencies on actions that reduce energy use. Uh, we spur the use of cleaner energy uh, or use alternative technology uh, to help uh, reduce carbon emissions that cause climate change. One of the wonderful things about working on pollution reduction and general sustainability. Did you say wonderful things? Wonderful. <laughs> hey, we've got to have fun doing this. <laughs> I'm going to see how much fun you're going to have as we go through all these questions. All right. All right. In the end, it's ultimately about improving quality of life Correct. for people. Correct. And so uh, the measures that we, the measures that we uh, uh, encourage people to do to reduce carbon emissions, they also reduce local air pollution. And that that helps air quality and, and, and the air we breathe. It's but when you say alternative technology, what types of alternative technologies are you, are you thinking about for, you know, for Fairfax County? Well, it, 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 even though it's pretty, not, not brand, brand new, but electric vehicles. Right. I mean, electric vehicles are, uh, you know, in the last 20 years, they've come on strong and they're still coming on strong. Uh, that's the kind of thing that is, is, um, really essential to, to our climate goals. And, and this is something that things are changing. Things are constantly evolving. When I, when I was early in my career, uh, electricity was, it wasn't something that you heated with. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like, no, we, we burned coal in a power plant, 30% efficient. Right. Transport that, that wonderful, useful power miles and then just turn it into simple heat again? Right. No, 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 no. So early in my career, we were all about, no, get rid of electric heat. That's, that's not good. Now, decades later, the, the generation of electricity is much, much cleaner than it was Correct. 40 years ago. Correct. And so now we realize that, oh, using electricity for, for cars, using electricity for heating, uh, this is now cleaner than the use of the fossil fuels. So I'm going to ask you this, and I know we're going, and this is probably off topic, just a tad, but when we say looking at it cleaner for the use of, uh, without using a lot of fossil fuels, when we have electricity and electricity generation, it still has a little bit of fossil fuel to create it. Do you see in the future, in the near future or the far future, where fossil fuels won't be needed to create electricity? It'll be in the mid mid okay. to far future. Um, okay. We're we're moving there rapidly, mm-hmm. but uh, just because the battery technology, another alternative technology, batteries are not fully developed yet, not not totally affordable uh, for widespread use. Uh, okay, we're we're moving there. Okay, all right. Well, you know, we're also trying to reduce the county's greenhouse gas emissions. It's a huge task, and you guys have done a very good job of getting us in a, in a decent place. We'll take a, hu- a whole of uh, county government to do the approach. Well, what are some of the actions that we are taking now to meet our goal in carbon neutrality? And more specific, to the county op- operations by 2040 or 2045 or 2050? Because that's a moving target for us. So what are we doing with greenhouse gas? Right. Well, the first thing we have to do is, is understand um, how, how much greenhouse gases we're responsible for and then identify how to, how to reduce them. So uh, we're focusing on what I call the big three, energy efficiency, increased use of renewable energy, 
and electrifying things. Um, with, with regard to energy efficiency, uh, uh, thanks to some, some work that our unit was doing with the uh, Parks Authority, uh, we were recognized with uh, an award from a statewide organization just in October uh, for energy improvements, retrofits at the uh, South Run and Cub Run mm -hmm. Recreation Centers. Uh, nearly 50% reduction in energy use there, which is huge because uh, those rec centers also have aquatic centers and, and swimming yeah. pools use a lot of energy. Yeah. So so this is the kind of thing, just replacing older, te older equipment with newer upgrades, reducing energy use. Uh, it's an investment up front, but then it pays for itself over the long term. Energy efficiency imp is important. Uh, the second one is renewable energy. Uh, we now have uh, solar solar rooftop uh, panel systems on on three buildings, mm -hmm. and we've got a queue of sixteen more buildings. Okay. Um, so we're using renewable energy at the source, which which also then reduces our our utility bills and and um, reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Third thing is the pursuit of electric vehicles, mm -hmm. and and which is which is also a challenge. Uh, we've got, uh, I think, over five dozen sedans in our fleet, uh, and then we've got two uh, solid waste collection vehicles that are electric. Uh, those just, uh, uh, they're in testing now mm -hmm. with the solid waste division, and uh, we've got eight commuter or uh, connector buses. buses. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge because we can only procure the equipment that the manufacturers are making. Correct. And so the county government has a lot of specialty equipment, a lot of heavy equipment, fire trucks, loaders, uh, you know, leaf collection vehicles. It, it's this is not the sort of thing that your GM and Ford are rolling out on a on, on a, a regular a basis. Regular basis. Right. And so uh, while Fairfax County is pretty big, we we can't move the market. Correct. Um, so we're, we're... Well, it's a business proposition for the GMs and the Fords as absolutely. well. Right? And absolutely. And all and all the other vendors. So I just want to go back on renewable energy. We have those three sites. One is in Reston. Uh, one is the Woodlawn Fire Station. And the other is a Sully Community Center. And you said That's 16 right. more in a queue. Yes. And we also talked about the electrification. Charge Up Fairfax is what we're doing as well. That's for the and community. I think, I think we should speak a little bit about Charge Up Fairfax because... You want to push towards EV, and we need to be able to provide our residents with the ability to charge up at a decent rate yes. and a quick rate. And, you know, we have, we're a community. We don't need to see uh, cords all over the place right. for trickle charging because that's what they would get. We need the 220 volts, and we need to be able to plug in, get it done, and then move forward. How's that program going? It's going well. Um, so, as, as you as you noted, so we've got we've got our, our work that we're doing for county operations, mm -hmm. but we've got a number of growing programs for the community, both residents and businesses, uh, because the community is where ninety five percent of the greenhouse gas emissions happen, and so uh, in to serve the community, uh, we've we've rolled out the Charge Up Fairfax program. Uh, this this effort where staff and consultants work with homeowners associations uh, to help them navigate uh, the decisions uh, and, and really the feasibility of, okay, where can an HOA or condominium locate its, its EV charging so, so that the residents can use it? Because mm -hmm. I ironically... Everybody says, oh, the electric, the electric vehicle industry is saying, oh, charge at home. Well, there are thousands of homes in Fairfax County that are members of condos or HOAs where they have uh, – they might be low-rise townhouses or, or, or walk-ups and they don't have their own driveway. They don't have their own garage. Uh, and so, no, we don't want to see trip hazards of, of the extension cords running from your townhouse. I, I got to tell you, I was in Alexandria, and I was walking in Alexandria, and there was the um, the plastic overlay that hides the, the wires right. right in the sidewalk. And I immediately said to myself, I'm calling the city manager. 
to talk to him about the trip hazard because right. what we're trying to do, again, and we have places in Fairfax that have the same situation, but have your 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 what we call the EV charging more acceptable and and closer to where people are. And we will have more EVs going forward, but we need to have places or banks to allow them to be charged in a in a way where it's not a tripping hazard because it was it was it was amazing to me to see how many cords were coming out trickle charging. Now a trickle charge takes at least a day to charge right. your car. So let's imagine what what I was walking through in Alexandria, and I hope I hope we're not going to do that here in Fairfax. No, we've made it we've made it clear. We've had inquiries to our office okay. asking, are we gonna are we gonna allow this like Alexandria allows this? And uh, we got in touch with uh, Land Development Services, and it was clear that no, this is not going to happen in Fairfax. Too. So when we when when we look at the power grid and the amount of electricity needed, are we good with Dominion? and Novak to ensure that we have the significant amount of electricity for us to move these projects forward? Yes. And so part of this Charge Up Fairfax program, we are in active touch with Dominion reps uh, on every site, uh, and and we coordinate with them. And so uh, we're, we're working to ensure that people can do it safely, uh, install these. Uh, it's up to the HOA, ultimately, their their board of directors and their residents mm -hmm. to decide if they want to make the investment, uh, which the Charge Up Fairfax program provides a, a modest reimbursement to cover some of their costs as an incentive. But it's ultimately up to the HOA. They've got this uh, uh, go, no go decision. And and uh, but but it's informed by communication with the okay. union. So I got one more question for you. And we're I just had a thought, and I'm sorry if, if you don't have an answer for this. You could just say I don't have an answer for this. But as we continually grow our electric vehicle fleet, i.e. buses, can we use the, the – where we charge it there and then reuse the electric that the buses generate back to help us with our power production in our facility at that site? Um don't have a definitive answer, but I'll tell you that Dominion, that is something that Dominion is extremely curious about. Mm -hmm. And that's something that they're, that uh, one of the reasons that they, they did the pilot program that the school system mm -hmm. is participating in is because Dominion wants to see if, in fact, when the school buses aren't running, but they're connected to that battery, can Dominion enable it so that the battery can essentially help charge, help power the school. Yeah. So that is something that uh, vehicle to grid, it's sometimes called, um, is something that, or in this case, it would be vehicle to, it could be vehicle to the grid or vehicle to the to the building, uh, is something that's that's a very exciting area if, that a lot of money's being yeah, spent I, to I research. Like, I like vehicle to the building because all of the, the majority of uh, electric school buses and or buses are on our site. Mm-hmm. Where we have buildings, and I could love, I would love to see us charge a a vehicle and then have it maybe at the heliport, powering up our heliport because we have a bus wrap there. So there's a lot of interesting things that we could be mm -hmm. talking about. I sorry to get off topic no, here for you. That's good, but I have I have another question. Or I we hear we hear lead, yes, L E E D. What certifications and wh 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 why do we go for LEED certification? Why is it important in your view? Yeah. Um, well, LEED, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, uh, is really the, the most widely used uh, green building certification program in, in the world. Um, it's run by a group called the U.S. Green Building Council, and it's really become the standard for uh, adding legitimacy to advanced building practices that make uh, uh, buildings uh, more environmentally friendly. And so you can uh, enter into the LEED system as you're, as you're designing a building uh, and target different levels of certification depending upon how advanced your building is. And it's, it's everything from uh, energy efficiency to waste management to indoor air quality they cover. And so... LEED certification, uh, again, is, is a le it legitimizes that you built a superior building for its environmental quality. 
there are four different levels. There's mm -hmm. just certified silver, gold, and platinum. And uh, we're excited that the uh, county just just got its first just got its first platinum certification for a, uh, a, f a fire station in, in Woodlawn in, Woodlawn. in, in the Mount Vernon area. Right. Um, that that is something that uh, a lot of people there aren't many platinum buildings in in the country and and. Uh, that it was a fire station is a is a strong achievement for the county and for the capital facilities group that designed and built it. Well, there is a cost associated with doing these buildings and maintaining these buildings, but it's also there's also um, our ability to reduce costs because they're energy efficient in, in such manner. So we are we're achieving our climate goals mm -hmm. for our community. The question I have is how are we working to achieve them other than what you just mentioned. What other goals are, are we striving to hit with our climate plan? Well, the climate plan is twofold. There's both the reducing the carbon pollution, also called mitigation, uh, reduce the, the speed at which climate change is happening. And then the other part is resilience. Uh, because we're now at a point where we realize, okay, the climate's already changing, mm -hmm. and we use the expression, uh, things are getting uh, wetter, warmer, and weirder. Uh, where Let me we say that again. Wetter, warmer, and weirder. Now, I'm not going to be able to say that three times fast. I just want you well. to know. <laughs> weirder, weirder is is things like uh, just more storms, yes. and and you know the, you know. I still find that thunderstorms in, in, in December and January, they're pretty weird to me. I mean, you expect a snowstorm, you don't expect a thunderstorm. Correct. Uh, but it's that kind of uh, odd or stronger uh, bad weather that, that is, is the weirder part. And so uh, a big part of, of climate action for Fairfax County is we've got an award-winning resilient Fairfax plan, which we're implementing now, which includes measures as broad as, as uh, uh, more focused uh, protection against flooding, mm -hmm. stormwater improvements, uh, really mapping the areas of risk in the county, and then, and then uh, taking measures to reduce the risks. Uh, one of the biggest hazards we have from, from climate change is heat. Um, uh, excess heat is is deadly, and and there are a lot of people in the community that uh, may not, you know, for for many of us today we it, we may find it hard to believe, but you know, not everybody has air conditioning, and so, um, at, or if the power goes out, you lose your air conditioning. Right, right. So um, the resilience plan includes uh, identification of cooling centers, mm -hmm. and then protecting the cooling centers to make sure they can operate. Sure when the power goes out and people need need cooling. Um, and lastly, trees. Uh, Canopies. Trees uh, help reduce mm -hmm. urban heat. Um, trees do a lot of, trees fit into a strong environmental program because trees provide multiple benefits. Um, they, they, uh, they reduce heat, um, they can Re reduce your cooling bill if if you've got a nice treed area. Um, they they reduce stormwater runoff. They they keep the the soil in place. Um, I I like to say that trees trump solar. You know if you have a if you have a beautiful tree in your yard and you've got a roof and you're like well I'd really like to put solar up there. Don't 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 cut the tree to put don't in the, put solar. the solar. Yeah, we don't use the word. Certain words we don't like to use. We can't use uh, presidential yes. acronyms. Yes. And, okay, it's all it, good. That, that, that expression predates <laughs> the recent unpleasantness. I hear you. I hear you. But, you know, all jokes aside, um, when, when we look at our programs that, that are available that you've articulated so well, the one thing that I'm worried about and not hearing from a – from, from an environmental standpoint or businesses, what can businesses do to help us get to where we need to be in Fairfax County? We talk about the residents. We talk about the government. Well, guess what? We have 
48,000 plus businesses in Fairfax County, of which 94% of them are 50 people or less. Right. Right. What are we talking? How are we talking or speaking with our business partners to say, here's where we're going. Help us out. Thank you. That's that's. Um, uh, let's me introduce the Green Business Partners. Uh, this is a, a, a new effort that we launched this year. We had a kickoff forum that was well attended in March, where we're we're working with, we're seeking to to collaborate with businesses large and small from across Fairfax County, who are either uh, already pursuing environmentally sound. Um, practices and and technologies or projects, or seeking to do so. So we're looking to to help them uh, with lessons learned and exchange exchange information with their peers, um, and then also recognize those that are that are doing outstanding work. Mm-hmm. So we have two levels: members and leaders. Mm-hmm. Now, the leaders already are are. They range from very, very small businesses to some of the the large Fortune 500 giants we have in Fairfax. Um, there is a small chocolatier uh, with a his his shop is in Herndon, mm-hmm. and he he sources his raw materials in an extremely sustainable manner. He gets cocoa from South America, he gets olive oil from Italy. He gets them here. By sailboat, no kid. Wind, and by wind. Yes, yeah, I like it. So, is it that, a French? Wait a minute. Does he does he do a sailboat like a French at sloop? Or I mean, how how big is a boat? Oh, it's it's um, it's medium size. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not like a tall ship from the eighteen uh, hundreds. Okay, because I got a special person that teaches me all these sailboat things. Okay. All right, I'm just letting you know. I think it's maybe bigger than a schooner. Okay, great. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to have to go look into that. But, you know, when, when you say things like that, it just sparks my curiosity to say, why don't we have an environmental excellence forum and we award folks who are working with us and publicizing on a, on a regular basis? Why don't we create, and if we have not created, when shall we create where we can put that forward to see how we can galvanize business? We, we, we had this successful uh, uh, Green Business Forum uh, in March. Mm-hmm. We would love to move that forward, make it bigger, and, and get more participation by businesses so that, yes, we can both recognize the good things they're doing, but we also think it would be helpful if the businesses had a bit of a megaphone themselves Correct. to really let others know that, hey, we are leaning into this environmentally, we're leaning into climate action. Um, so, so among our leaders uh, are um, uh, Innova Health, and we've got uh, General Dynamics IT, and Freddie Mac are, are three of the, the larger firms that have uh, signed up and, and are participating in this program. We are providing some visibility for them. We've got videos uh, available on our web where Freddie Mac is describing their commitment to green energy, their commitment to energy efficiency, their commitment to including their employees in their environmental programming. Um, and, and I think we've got a, a, a video in, in development with Inova as well. It would be great if those same businesses also helped us spread our messaging, and 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 I think we're we're moving to this where they are providing information about county programs to their employees and also to their. So what I what I think we're going to do, John, is look at an opportunity for us because we always talk about residents, which mm-hmm. is great because that's what we need to do. Right. Um, we talk about county mm-hmm. government. That's great. Maybe in an environmental committee meeting, we bring in the Freddie Macs and Ionovas to talk about where they're headed as a business entity to start pushing that word out there that these are the things that we expect or we hope to expect from our business partners. That, I would welcome that. That, okay. that, that. That's something that I think we can uh, look to do in 2024. Okay. So in closing, yes. if you have a minute to say what you need to say that you didn't say to this, to this point, what would it be for our residents, for our, our county operations, 
for the businesses? What would what words to ponder by John Morrow? Uh, not profound, but know your carbon footprint. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got um, refer you to our our website for our office uh, where we have a, a link to the EPA carbon footprint calculator, and you can find out where you know what is your impact, uh, and then. Simple response, it's not exotic, but insulate. Okay. Insulate. Um, 95% of buildings in Fairfax County, I can say safely, are under-insulated. Yeah. And just to, just to um, keep, keep the heat in, keep the cool in. Um, think, about, think about your travel. Um, you want, you, tra- you want transportation. me to use a boat? Well— that guy, that guy <laughs> is walking the walk. I mean, the fact because yeah, I mean, steamships, you know, yeah, yeah, the, the sludgy, yeah, yeah, sludgy yeah. fuel. Yeah, he's like, no, just put it. Oh, you got a sailboat? Just put it on that boat and bring it to us. <laughs> um, think about your travel, uh, and and I know that most people just buy a car every five or ten years, so you know the switch to electric might not be imminent, but but think about your travel. And lastly. Uh, Sign up for our newsletter. Okay. Uh, we've How do got we do a, that? we've got a monthly newsletter. We've got a link on our website that uh, the monthly newsletter is filled. It's not long. It's not wordy. It's brief, but it's got it's got links to information, news, and county programming that outlines opportunities, including all the federal funding and incentives that are coming. Awesome. Awesome. Well. Words of wisdom from John Morrow, uh, connecting with County Leaders podcast. Uh, it's been a pleasure, sir. The, the Office of Environmental en- Energy Coordination are in great hands. And I thank you for listening to our topic uh, on the environment, which is one of our 10 strategic plan operative, uh, options that we have for our county residents. Uh, next podcast, guess what? I get public safety. I get deal. both chiefs. In the next two podcasts, and I look forward to meeting with Marvin Lewis from George Mason University, who's our new athletic director. Again, all along the themes of our strategic plan and connecting with county leaders. Thank you so much for listening. And John, thank you for, for your words of wisdom. Thank you for having me. My man. Thank you. This has been the Connect with County Leaders podcast with Fairfax County Executive Brian Hill. To listen to other great Fairfax County podcasts, visit fairfaxcounty.gov slash podcasts. And for additional audio content, tune in to Fairfax County Government Radio at fairfaxcounty.gov slash radio. For more Fairfax County news and information, visit News Center online at fairfaxcounty.gov slash news. The Connect with County Leaders podcast is produced by the Fairfax County, Virginia government.